Okay, so everybody's here. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to talk about the second part of uh, real estate, which we had discussed prior. So before this video, you guys would um, have the knowledge of what happened in 2008 and that market recession we just discussed, right? Now, the purpose of this video is to give you a breakdown, as I promised, about you know doing real estate alone and doing it with players who have experience. And there is a huge difference between both. And we're going to go through the breakdown of how to do it effectively in this video. So objectively, when you start in real estate by yourself, right, what you have to do is you have to make your own decisions, right? So that means that in this scenario, when you start off, you have the obligation to make your own decisions. That means the mistakes that you have to go through to tr the property types that you have to choose, the asset class that you want to go after, and essentially, you know, dive deep into, into exactly that process. So... With that being the case, that means that you know, you'll probably have to work a lot at the beginning to kind of figure out what, what are some of the things that you want to go after and what would make financial sense for you, right? Or on the other side, if you work with players with experience, what you have is the decision is usually done by the group or the sponsor. And these are people who have qualified and value-driven deals. And the reason why I say this is critical is because when you're doing real estate, uh, you want to be in a situation where the deals actually make sense for you. The deals are actually some things that would add value to you in your final financial portfolio or your financial goal, right? So in this situation, when you're working with players with experience, you have groups or sponsors who make the decision for you. And that's something that I would do 100% all the time because typically these individuals come with background experiences and have a significant asset class that I can go after and take a portion of my own without the need to build it up alone and then eventually go after it, right? So, one again, going against the alone side, you actually have to build your independent experience. And the reason I say this is risky is because when you're building independent experience, you're gonna come through some ups and downs. Sometimes you're gonna go through significant, significant financial loss. And that may not be something that you wanna digest right off the get-go getting into real estate. You know, you don't wanna have that, uh, bad taste in your mouth, that distaste of, you know, real estate is not for me or real estate isn't my thing because at the beginning I got screwed, for example, right? So you want to start off in a position where you don't have to make that those type of, you know, experiences and decisions yourself. So what you do in that case is you have other people, which you can, in, in, the, in their area where you have players with experience, you leverage others' experience. Not only do you exp leverage their experience, you also leverage their work. And the reason why this is critical is because a lot of people get into real estate and what they end up doing is, you know, they go and try to build that experience, they network and they learn all these type of concepts and they end up never executing on whatever they learn. And the reason why it's because sometimes there's a concept called paralysis analysis, right? Like you're analyzing so much information that you're paralyzed, that you're not able to act on it. So in this situation, what we're doing is we're ensuring that you can actually act on it. By leveraging players with experience, you're leveraging their work and their experience at the same time. Whereas here, you have to go through the route of building yourself. There's a lot of risk in that concept. Now, I'm not saying that it cannot be done. It definitely could be done, but you have to go through that phase where you learn a great deal and you have to deal with a lot of people and you have to build the experience. You have to learn to negotiate. You have to learn what the bid, how does it work. You know, working with title companies, you have to work with attorneys, et cetera, et cetera. So it does get a little bit complicated sometimes. You also have to work hard. And you have to build the access to those relationships, which means that, you know, when you get into real estate, unless you're paying for a coaching program, which is very expensive, you know, it can range from 10, 25, 50, even $100,000. Uh, if you don't have those kind of access or capital to deploy in those coaching programs or relationship accesses, you have to work hard and you have to build those accesses. You have to build those relationships. And that's a very time consuming thing because it can take years, decades sometimes and you know what ends up happening is those typical people who have access or relationships or who have a lot of transactions are usually working with individuals who have money or have some sort of financial capacity uh, to get transactions done. They're busy, right? So you'll have to put yourself in front of them in a way that is interesting for them, but at the same time you have to create a scenario or engineer a scenario where it would make you know, viable or financial sense. But unfortunately, a lot of people at the beginning don't have that access, so they have to work hard and build it. In this scenario, when you're working with players with experience, what you have is more access and relationships. And this is beautiful because you immediately access a bigger network, right? Um, and I forget to mention, when you're doing real estate with others with experience, your risk is diversified. It's shared with others. It's not just you alone, right? Uh, but going back into the topic of access relationship, 
when you have individuals who have a lot of network, who have a lot of access, uh, those relationships are pre-established. What you're essentially doing is you're tapping into them without the additional, you know, learning curve, without the additional, you know, going through the phase of, you know, whether or not those relationships would make sense, whether or not these are individuals that want to work with you alone, right? You're basically leveraging other people's CVs, their experiences, their portfolios, their transactions, and breaking into that relationship in a very easy way. Whereas when you're alone, you have to build that. It's going to take a little bit of time. Now let's cover the topic of wealth when it comes to real estate. So with real estate, when you're alone, you're going to have to build and establish wealth slowly at the beginning and steadily, right? So if you're doing wholesaling, you know, you're going to get some money here and there, uh, assignment fees, you know, uh, selling it to another investor and doing all these type of things where if you work independently on your own, this, this whole process, you know, whether when it comes to building wealth, it's going to take you a few months, sometimes years, right? To reach a reasonable financial level. With that reasonable financial level, then you have to leverage it up and then scale it. And you'll be tapped in terms of the limitations, in terms of how much mortgages you can get, in terms of what kind of properties you can access. You're a one-man show unless you hire other individuals and that can get costly. Whereas, if you work with players with experience, right, what you have is you can actually accelerate your wealth five to ten times faster. And the reason why I say that is because when you work with players with experience, what you end up doing is you build access to those wealth through the channels that they have, essentially, right? If you're investing, let's say, in a syndication, and by the way, I'm not an attorney, so legal disclosure, uh, all these type of discussions that we're talking about, we're going to talk about some of the conditions for you to actually fulfill uh, in order to qualify to do business with those people with players uh, with experience uh, but you know going back into that topic you can accelerate your wealth faster right so you have access to these syndication type of transactions where you come together with a group of like-minded investors and you guys put your money together and that goes into a relative transactions that's particularly bigger for the portion of money that you have and you have a, a, an exit strategy that's found out for you and everything of that nature right so that's beautiful and you actually make some money in the process Whereas if you do it with uh, the same amount of money that you would have deployed with players' ex experience, but if you do it yourself, you know, you have to kind of go through the process of learning. You have to go through the process of executing, you know, the agreements yourself. You have to go through the uh, attorneys, and they get expensive, right? So and we're going to get into the topic, right? So just keep that in mind. That's the huge difference. So you also have to do yourself the customer service. It's a do-it-yourself customer service. And what I mean by customer service is you have tenants you have to manage, right? You have to find the exit buyer. You have to negotiate with, let's say, somebody who's buying the property from you after you rehab it, let's say, if you're in a fix and flip scenario. Uh, you actually have to go through and find the people who are in, in um, let's say, you're in a wholesale situation. You have to deal with those people that you're trying to solve problems for who are willing to sell their properties or assign it to you for the for that for that, you know, leveraging so you can actually find the end buyer. And that's all on you. You have to take that responsibility. There's a lot of work to be done, right? Whereas if you do it here, it's a done for you customer service. So typically the sponsor or the person who's qualified is bringing the deal together and syndicating it or putting it together as a group uh, has access to those type of transactions. So they're looking at portfolios of deals and they have a whole team in place that's doing the research, that's doing the due diligence, that's doing the negotiations, that's doing uh, the legal work that's doing, let's say, um, you know, ins insurance, et cetera, et cetera. So they already have all the customer service handled for you. All you have to do is deploy capital in that existing portfolio or transaction opportunity, and everything's pretty much said and done, right? Whereas a loan, like I said, you have to, you know, toilets, termites, and tenants, you know, that, that old good saying, uh, you have to deal with it yourself. Now, you also have a high barrier to entry. And the reason why this is very critical is because a lot of people get into real estate and they think it's easy. They just go and find a property that's a discounted property and they find a financing and they get an investor, which we call OPM, and, you know, they just do their business. In that scenario, you know, a lot of people, which, which with that mindset, have to understand that they're competing with hundreds of thousands of people of the same nature who are looking to do that. Now the investor is basically bombarded with a lot of deals or potential investors, and now they have to choose. And typically what they end up doing is doing this. So instead of relying on one individual, they go after a team and they put a little bit more money than they would have uh, individually and then basically make their money work for them, right? So keep in mind, investors have a preference. And the typical preference is they go with a team that knows how to structure transactions, have done a good amount of them in the past, uh, have, have done a sense of um, you know accomplishment in terms of transaction, the type of transaction. So in this scenario, when you're participating in that, uh, you have a low barrier to entry, right? And the reason why you have a low barrier to entry is because you don't have to go through all that negotiation, legal work, uh, you know, transactional uh, you know, paperwork, due diligence, et cetera, et cetera. So in this situation, when I say conditions apply, is what I mean by, let's say, if you're alone, 
and you reach a certain level of income, right? A threshold, what we call accredited investors. And typically accredited investors have to meet a certain income threshold and or asset threshold. And then they can participate in these type of transactions as accredited investors. Well, let's assume you're not an accredited investor, right? Let's assume that you basically are just getting started and you want to save some money and you want to deploy. What you can do is you can create partnerships with other individuals who have the experience and form a type of entity that would allow you to have voting rights in them and you participate in the decision making. And typically, you know, if you're working with experienced individuals and they're your mentors, you guys come to a unanimous decision on what's going to happen. So in that scenario, you do not have to be an accredited investor, right? So by the way, I'm not a securities attorney. I'm just giving you ideas and how some of these transactions are, are, are structured, right? So that's the, po the, the, the possibility with other individuals who have experiences. Now, here you have unknown waiting periods. And what I mean by unknown waiting periods is, let's say if you're getting in a fix and flip scenario, sometimes what you're doing is you're waiting for months on end before this is taken care of, right? And sometimes you don't know what's happening. Sometimes all of a sudden a foundation issue has come up and during the inspection somehow it's missed or some issue with the, uh, the roof that wasn't changed for a few years and, and you, gotta hand, you gotta handle that. So in a scenario like this, you have unknown waiting periods. Whereas on the other side, if you come here, you actually have a short and midterm waiting period. And the reason I say that is because typically people who transaction, uh, who structure these type of transactions have a decent you know, three to seven year waiting period. And during that process, what ends up happening is when they go through this whole phase and then they find a transaction that's suitable for you know, investors, they, they tell them, look, you have two options. You can participate in the deal long term or you can have an exit. But what, whatever the case, here's the bonus you get and here's the interest rate or whatever the cash flow we're going to generate and here's your equity portion. So it's predetermined usually on a term sheet and then when you guys are signing off on it or the transaction, they tell you the exit strategy. Usually it's a three to seven year waiting period because most people in this scenario, they're buying multifamily, right? Or they're doing some sort of transaction that revolves multiple units. And when that happens is they have a strategy that they can add value, which increases the equity in that property over time, usually, right? And they do some work on it that makes it enhanced. They look at the comps, usually where the rents are. And if they have lower rent, usually that's, you know, low barrier to entry. They have the opportunity to increase that to value add. And value add is essentially renovations, adding some sort of supplemental utilities in the, in the houses, um, you know, appliances, uh, you know, all sorts of other things that can be done to accommodate their customers, which is essentially the tenants living in them, uh, to appreciate, to increase the value of cash flow, to increase the uh, asset itself in terms of um, whatever the equity is, and then you get your portion on the exit. Or you can participate and do what we call a, um, a bigger and better deal, right? So you have these unknown waiting periods here alone, but with players with experience, you actually have a determined time frame uh, that usually does work pretty fairly because they already have a track record and they can verify that and validate that for you. Another big point when you're doing real estate alone, and not to scare you guys, but you have a lot of independent costs, right? You have to pay your attorneys, you know, real estate attorneys. You have to pay your title companies. You have to pay, you know, all sorts of things that will, you know, add up to the to the bill, closing costs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all these things are factored in here, and they can range in the thousands of dollars, which can get very expensive for somebody who's starting in real estate. But if you have money saved aside and you're reasonable with your financials and you really don't want to go through the burden of paying all these professionals and hiring headaches, the team with the experience, the players with the experience, usually have their own in-house team. They have their counsel, they have whoever they have to do, title companies are pre-worked, and they usually include it in the financials. So your budget going into this, usually combined with a series of other investors, like-minded individuals as a conglomerate, is reducing the cost. And in addition to reducing the cost, uh, these people are already doing transactions with them for a long time now, so their cost is a lot cheaper than you are going out there and hiring these professionals independently. You don't have the headache of worrying about that or negotiating those fees or prices. This is already done for you. So that's the major difference of getting into real estate when you're trying to do it alone and when you're trying to do it with players with experience. And the reason why I say it's, it's important for you to pay attention to this is because eventually what you're going to have to do is you're going to start building your wealth. Now, whether you're starting in a home or residence or single family, and then you want to phase it up and build a duplex or triplex, you know, whatever it is, eight plex, and then multifamily in the large uh, commercial style. You still have to learn to deal with individuals. You have to do your own cleaning of the bathrooms, etc. If something goes wrong, you have to hire your own plumbing. You have to hire the professionals. It get expensive, and all these type of due diligence costs. Now, it is a scary thing to understand and consider, but at the end of the day, it is the reality of the situation, and you do have to consider that when you start doing these type of transactions. Uh, you have to take the responsibility to understand what you're getting yourself into. In addition to that, with players with experience, you know, they bring everything to the table for you. It's very clear. It's crystal 
you know, fully transparent. And as well as that, which what ends up happening is you can actually go out there and do the transactions that you need to with, with you know, peace of mind, without the headaches of understanding what you need to do, where to go, how to negotiate, et cetera, et cetera. So with that said and done, I hope you understand the difference or the key differences between doing real estate alone when it comes to investment properties to doing real estate with players with experience, right? So with that said and done, my friends, this is Ali Raptor, your guided mentor. If you like what I said today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below on what you think is, you know, what makes sense to you guys. If you agree with what I said, you know, th there are some things that you can, of course, uh, you know, comment below and ask me, hey, Ali, what about this? What about that? So I'll be more than happy to answer your questions when it comes to real estate, particularly in that side. Uh, and don't forget to share this video if you found it valuable. Subscribe to that news that I'll be sending out content regularly. It will help you take your credit and wealth to the next level. Uh, so that's it for me today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.